in Maine is a time to be on the water, whether paddling a canoe on a northern stream or riding water skis on a southern lake. We are lured to the water and for a select group of Maine sailors, it's the chance to once again head out to sea in a beautiful boat called a friendship sloop. Those boats are part of Maine's history and 207's Don Kerrigan got to take a sail on one to learn the history. As the fog slowly lifts in Rockland Harbor, Andy Zuber steers the Gladiator away from the dock and points out other boats much like her. This is a wooden one? Correct. Gladiator is what sailors know as a friendship sloop. Named for that part of Maine where many were built, the sloops have become iconic, single-masted images of the Maine coast. And they're gathering on this day for the annual Friendship Sloop Regatta. It's an event that's been held for around 60 years, all because of a love for these particular boats. Friendship sloops were sort of built at the apogee of the age of sail. We talked at Dockside with Andy and fellow sloop owner Diane Fassick. They reminded us that one reason they love these friendships is that the original ones, like Gladiator, were built to be fishing boats. But friendship sloops are handy they can be easily sailed by two people, um, and they're a good work platform. Right. And they're nice to look at. Well, that's, I guess that's, <laughs> that's clearly a piece of it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have a unique look compared to most other sailboats. Right. Well, I think also because they are working boats and by their core, right, so they were built for that form and function, and you put the, that together in a design, and you have a truly beautiful sailing craft. And as we headed out of the harbor, others were coming in. Some of today's friendship sloops never fished, some are newer models, but Andy's boat and Diane's too are both more than a century old. Both had working lives before motors took over and sailing became something for fun. You ready to haul away? Diane's husband hauls up the mainsail. Then they set the jib. Haul away, boys. The wind catches them both. And just like that, Gladiator is sailing. When you finally had that moment, you've got the sails up. Uh-huh. And you, you shut the engine off. Yeah. How does that feel? Well, it's awesome. It's quiet, right? I mean, this is carbon neutral, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that it is. is. That's at true. At its best. That's true. That's <laughs> the original. It is quiet and relaxing. And for these friendship sloop owners, it's an essential part of life. Both were literally born into families with a love for these boats. It's part of our upbringing and it's our family. It's they're living, breathing things and taking care of them. Um, is really the joy of our lives. I mean, this is what we all love to do. Diane says her father taught her to sail at a young age on their friendship. For Andy, it's carrying on the legacy of his own father, who bought their boat the year before Andy was born. I mean, I do everything on this boat. I've learned to do everything on this boat through my dad and through the experience of sailing, navigating, uh, you name it. Uh, and passing that on to my sons and my stepdaughter and sharing it with people and sharing it, that's, that's the beauty yes. of it. I mean, just gliding along and having that moment where everything is, is just kind of right with the world. Down below, it's snug but comfortable, and Andy points with pride to a piece of paper. This piece of paper is the original licensing document that they have a copy. My folks found a copy of it where they they documented it in 1902. They admit the friendship sloops may not be fast, but very solid and stable, much heavier than modern sailboats, which is why they need such big sails. So I had to try a turn at the wheel. And how sensitive, that's pretty sensitive, isn't it? Yeah. It drives like a car. Sailing quietly past Rockland's breakwater, you start to understand why the people who cherish these boats some for generations are so attached to their friendship sloops. We're not yacht people. 
We're people that shouldn't own boats, but we do anyway. So what's the difference between you and the yacht people? Well, yacht, yacht people have money, <laughs> typically. You know, they, have, they pay somebody to take care of their boats. We, we just have boats because we want a boat, and, and we figure it out. Figuring that out has been a core part of their lives and still is. It's what keeps some of these sloop owners coming back each year to race, <laughs> to share the pull of the big sails filling with wind, to know they're following in the wakes of tough Mainers from a century and more ago who began building and working these boats and sharing the joys of carrying on a tradition, one that's based on Maine history, on family history, and of course, friendship. Oh, neat. Andy Zuber says the Friendship Sloop Society, of which he is the current Commodore, has members around the country and in other countries. He even said a man in Chile had built one and that some people in New Zealand were doing the same. Both he and Diane told us they have children who will be the next generations to own and sail those beautiful boats. And there's much more about the history and the boats on the Society's webpage. We also have a link on our website and our app. Coming up